Okay, they play a quick a3, preserving the bishop. So I think it probably makes sense just striking in the center. Yeah, Lima Dado, I definitely had a, um, a poor bishop there. Um, that's why I think I really need that, that chance I missed, that opportunity I missed to play um, just b6 and everything really kind of came back to, came back to hurt me. All right, let's tickle the bishop and we're going to put our bishop on d6 and get ourselves castled. Make sure that e5 is nice and nice and protected. This looks good to me. Okay, that move makes sense. So I think we bring our bishop to f5 instead. Right there, okay. Looks like this is a potential move here. I always like, you know, if I'm able to exchange off the c6 knight for the f3 knight in any of the open games, that typically is, is a good exchange for, for black it's because this is kind of our problem piece. It gets, it gets the knight away and liberates the c5 pawn. And this is often a very good attacking piece for white. Okay, and I like this change in structure for us. I, I like this. I like this pawn. Could use it as kind of a spearhead to um, a potential attack. See where the knight goes. Okay, the knight drops back there. Wonder if we can play a really active move here, like Queen H4. That looks really good. It's a nice attacking move. Also happens to uh, defend the the D4 score and the F4 score. I mean, what's not to like about this move? Let's do it. We've got we've got a very nice. Very, very nice attacking position, I think. And H3 may prove to be may prove to be a weakness. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. We got a full house today. This is awesome. So just make sure, guys, uh, we'd really appreciate it if you could shoot us a follow. If you're lurking, that's cool, but That'll really help us achieve our, our, our goal and also allow you to, to chat and interact with the community. So don't forget to follow. Sacrifice here looks really attractive. Um, wouldn't really be playing with all my pieces there though. Actually wondering here if like a nice positional move like actually bishop to e6 would be good. Trading off this dangerous bishop and then maybe finding a route into the game for for my knight. I think first and foremost though we need to just offer this this pawn some some defense. So I think pawn to c5 is probably best. Yeah, that looks good. Let's see if we could even provoke g4, right? Like, it's a move we just discussed about, discussed playing was, um... So opponent, my opponent offers a, uh, a queen exchange. I think that might be okay for us, just because I don't want my, I don't want the queen to get too too passive, and this does give us 
some time to get our rook in the game nicely. Yeah, I think I think we've got a really good position here. And I like I like this potential swap for us. I like it a lot. Mainly aimed at improving the scope of this knight, trading off our opponent's best minor piece. If he takes, he starts doubling our rooks on the e file. Like so. Thank you very much. Now this knight has a fantastic square on d5, where it's going to eye up a bunch of different weaknesses. So really happy with those turn of events. If knight e4, I think a prudent move might just be bishop f8. Preserving the bishop, defending this pawn, maybe preparing to kick the knight. Okay, we have it on the board. Yeah, and right here I was just thinking about this move. That is a nice knight he established for himself, though. That's for sure. I just want to make sure that I'm able to retreat my rook if need be without losing contact with this pawn. actually looks okay to me. I think this is fine. Because I've got something very, very specific in mind if my opponent plays the move pawn to f5. I think I've got a good response. And now I can just, you know, really just comfortably defend it with b6. Really just shore up that whole, whole structure. say it's a pretty pretty balanced position you know we we both have we don't both have space my opponent on the king side me and the queen side we both got good knights my look my rooks are a little bit better coordinated but i don't think that's like you know decisive or anything <laughs> That move was a little loose. I played it with the eye, eye towards playing pawn to f5, supporting that. Because I would like to be able to exchange twice and land my knight on an e3. I think that looks pretty good.
don't really want to let the G file open towards my king. So, huh, it takes. I guess I'll take on Passant here. See what my opponent decides to do. I don't know if playing f5 is good for me or not, to be honest. Well. I am able to improve the scope of this bishop, which is nice. <laughs> All right, let's make this advance now, I guess. Kick the knight, maybe some captures on on E1 with with a capture on C3. <laughs> like I like my queen side play, but we'll see. I mean, it shouldn't be too double edged for us because yeah, my G file might open if I recapture, but the rooks are going to be coming off in this position, so my king's not in like mortal danger or anything. See how our opponent recaptures. Takes with the rook, okay. Now, do I want to keep the knight on the board? Or do I want to keep the bishop on the board? This. Okay, we're, we've won a pawn, gaining time on the bishop. We'll pre move this capture. Okay, we're able to let's come here really force the king back to f3 let's see actually I kind of like the look of kicking this knight Knight e6, maybe bringing our king like this. Looks like we're really activating our, our king. Now our opponent can get some... I'm just looking at here. Get in the night, the night's shadow. Okay. And I think we can just play this advance. Now this knight doesn't have many squares to go to. This knight's protecting everything nicely. King 
here. And we'll just look to advance this majority. Could even consider a move like this just to really restrict the knight. step closer to promotion. Yeah, the problem is we are very, very fast in this position. Very fast. And this, this knight is an absolute eon away from the And we control here, which is a big time problem. We got the dub. All right, that was a good one. You can really, you can really evaluate those knight end games the same way as like a king and pawn ending. The evaluations are typically very similar. So I just knew that our play in the queen side and the, and the latent power of those outside pass pawns were going to be really, really strong in that. Okay, so it doesn't like bishop d6. Bishop f5 may have been a better continuation there. Okay. It did not like knight d4. King h8 would have been best. Okay, kind of a, kind of a wacky move, but maybe with an eye towards having to play f6 to defend this perhaps not exactly sure so we did well exchanging Queens all of this was excellent we should have taken on passant this is all good best move all of this is good all of this is good we played the end game perfectly so I'm really really happy with that Made a little, two mistakes in the opening, bishop d6 not being best. I haven't really gotten to that line in chessable yet. Knight d4, again, I was borrowing that more from my experience in other open games. May not have been best. But the rest of the game we played really well. Just give me a second while I close this door. Yeah, Lima Dado, that's, yeah, that's exactly what I just said. According to books, knight and pawn end game is equal to pawn end game. You should be winning. Yeah. So they are, they are easier to evaluate than when there are, when there are bishops present. I'll be right back. Yeah, and once once we went up that went up that, so like if you look at a position like this, where there are knights on, you know we're up a pawn in this position, and we've got this outside. We've got this outside pawn majority. White just does not have time to counterattack me. And the really nice thing about my, the way I've coordinated my pieces is defended, defended, defended. The king can come here, but this is defended, okay? The king has no way into this position. The king is completely boxed out. So white is just forced to play with the knight. His only source of counterplay is going after here, but after b4, okay, after b4, there's there's tension here, so, you know, the king is just a mile, a mile out of the, out of the square of these pawns, so, b4 is just completely winning, there's, there's nothing to do, there's nothing to do for 